Now let's talk about Arthur's Family Feud, which is episode 85A. And here's our other special guests, the Reed family. Hi there. Hello. At least now I can take a break from Sue Wallen. Okay, now that everyone's here, let's get started. So this episode starts out with me going through TV channels, and all of them included fighting. I tried to talk to the viewers about what's going to happen in today's episode, but DW kept interrupting me. I even threw Pal's bacon chew toy at her. Pal couldn't believe what he was seeing. After the title card was read, my dad was making a souffle. He wanted to show my mom, but when he entered the kitchen, the souffle was on the floor. DW and I blame each other until my mom told us to go to the living room to tell them what happened. We both tried to tell them, but my dad just punished us with no TV for two months. Then it increased to three months. Then four months. Then he told us to forget it. Daddy was really upset. Yup. Anyway, my mom then told us to go up to our rooms to cool down. Except D.W. wanted to go to the petting zoo with the Tibbles, and I wanted to go to the Bionic Bar Bunny Arcade that just opened. Mom said we'll just have to wait and see. So we went up to our rooms. The scene transitions to me throwing a ball at the wall. In the imagination sequence, I took the blame when D.W. had all the crazy bus stuff in her room, and she said it was my room. In jail, I was playing my harmonica when D.W. entered the scene and gave me a radio. It was playing crazy bus when I turned it on. Back to reality, the scene transitions to D.W.'s room. She was having a tantrum with a pillow over her head. Then a rock was thrown at the window. D.W. opened it and noticed the Tibbles. They wanted to make sure she was still going to the petting zoo with them, but she couldn't because since she was punished. In the imagination sequence, D.W. and I were old and still fighting over the souffle. Back to reality, D.W. and I tried to make things right by confessing what has been done. The thing was, we just continued arguing. The scene then transitions to the whole family at the dinner table. Mom and Dad wanted to know what really happened. We could even draw pictures to help explain it. To decide who would go first, Dad flipped a coin. I guessed heads. I guessed tails. I was going to say heads. I'm sure you were. Anyway, I went first. I explained that I was in the den sitting on the couch and doing my homework when D.W. came barging in wanting to play. When that didn't work, she started bothering Pal by throwing the bacon toy all wrong. So I showed her the right way to do it. Then I threw it to her, but she missed it because she wasn't paying attention. When the bacon toy flew through the kitchen door, D.W. chased after it while I chased after her. I tried to tell her to watch out for Dad's souffle, but I didn't get there in time. That's my story. Now for D.W.'s side of the story. First off, she didn't want to play with me, but she did want to ask me a question. Then Pal picked up the bacon toy because he wanted to play. Everything was going fine until I butted in and threw the toy really hard. D.W. ran to go get it. Then I pushed her into the table, and that's what made the souffle fall. So you admit it! D.W. You know that didn't happen. Well, it was worth a shot. Anyway, as D.W. and I argued who was lying, Mom blew the whistle. I was wondering where that whistle came from. You weren't in this episode, Buster. No, but I like to be. I mean, we know that it was you and D.W. who made the souffle fall. But we don't know who threw the bacon toy. True. We could use a detective like you. Or Fern. Right. Anyway, so Buster was right on the fact that D.W. and I both made the souffle fall. Do you know how that was? We were both wearing socks. And only socks. The kitchen floor is really slippery, you know. Anyway, after the mystery was solved, D.W. and I apologized to Dad and we were off to do our activities. Except we noticed that Dad was feeling sad. So D.W. and I decided to make a new souffle. Except we argued again until Dad entered the scene. He decided to help us. The scene then transitions to the whole family digging in. And that's how the episode ends. And I must say, the souffle was the most beautiful souffle we've ever made. Agreed. Well, that's Arthur's family fun. Now let's talk about each episode as a whole. What did you think of Arthur and Los Vecinos, Buster? Well, Arthur, I thought this episode was a fun one. I mean, it's fun to meet new neighbors. They can be part of your family after all. 
True. What about Sue Ellen's little sister? What did you think of that? Well, I thought the title was a bit confusing because Sue Ellen gets a brother at the end, doesn't he? Doesn't she? Well, yeah, but I think this episode was trying to focus on Sue Ellen trying to be sisters with DW. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. Now, what about Arthur's family feud? What did you think of that? Well, I thought this episode had the most arguing I have ever heard in my whole entire life. But figuring out who knocked over the souffle was kind of fun. So, in other words, you're kind of in the middle. Exactly. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today. I would like to thank Alberto, Visita, Sue Ellen, and my family for coming on to our show. I would also like to thank Buster for helping me out with this podcast. Finally, I would like to thank you for listening. See you next time. Bye!